Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. So as you can probably see or notice, I haven't posted a single video surrounding this whole UFO shoot down fiasco since the entire thing started uh, with the discovery of the Chinese balloon. And that was for good reason. And the countless times that I've seen things like this go down, the exact things that you guys are seeing happening in the media with these UFOs being shot down and everything surrounding surrounding it. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I do not buy the story that the government is feeding you when it has to do with basically this entire situation as it pertains to all of these sudden incursions out of nowhere of multiple objects appearing, multiple objects being shot down by military jets, the reasoning behind it, and this sort of smokescreen that the government and the mainstream media and their poster boys and their handlers are putting out there, it's total nonsense. And so I'm not going to go over the entire timeline of these shoot downs starting with the Chinese balloon, which was confirmed to be a Chinese spy balloon, and then the other three unknown objects that were later throughout the week discovered and also shot down. And so you guys have been pretty much battered nonstop if you've watched any sort of mainstream news or TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, it's been everywhere. And a lot of people have been posting videos on it. A lot of people have been capitalizing on this whole fiasco, as I call it. But I, myself, as soon as I saw this popping off, I told myself I'm going to sit back and watch this thing play out before I post a video possibly or potentially giving you guys misinformation about the situation and I really wanted to see where this whole UFOs being shot down thing was going and now we know where it was going which is exactly where I knew in my own head at least it would be which is nowhere and I've been getting a ton of, of messages and emails uh, and comments from viewers wanting me to post a video about it so I'm going to briefly touch on it here. And if you've been under a rock lately, in a nutshell, beginning on February 4th, the U.S. government suddenly decided to take an interest in unknown objects floating in our atmosphere. Strangely, right? I mean, I've been running this channel for 10 years. I've had UFO footage that's been featured on Fox News, the New York Post, CNN, I mean, you name it, although I don't consider CNN a news source, but this was back in 2015, 2016, I mean, crazy footage, and the government didn't care then, and I can tell you guys, the government doesn't care now. This had nothing to do with aliens. I heard that there were theories out there from the likes of Dr. Greer, who I've had on this channel uh, two or three times, and done interviews with and you can check those out but he he uh, allegedly put out the narrative that this was a false flag event to cover up an impending alien invasion it's not guys all right uh, i don't know what it is with greer I don't know him, know him, if you know what I mean, like personally, besides the interviews I've done, but it seems like anytime something crazy like this happens, a lot of these so-called UFO poster boys or king researchers, whatever you want to call them, they always want to push everyone online to the point of a total breakdown when stuff like this happens, to instill fear in you, to where people legitimately are outside looking out their windows, wondering if an actual alien invasion is going to happen. It's not. I know all about Project Blue Beam. I've done videos on it years ago. All right, this is kid stuff. It's child's play. And while there was at one time, allegedly, all right, something called Project Blue Beam, where in which the government had spoke about the possibility of using things like holograms and lasers in order to create a fake alien invasion and usher in some sort of new world order, well, I, I can legitimately, with the best intentions, tell you guys that's not what has happened. Uh, the funny thing is, is that just as I'm posting this video, the government, after all of this hype, that I've been seeing all week long. Every major news outlet, every major person in ufology or UFO research or that, that has a stake in this topic has been completely going nuts. And I do understand it to some degree if you're the public and you don't know a lot about this stuff. But come on, guys, we have seen this before. This entire thing that has occurred with the government suddenly uh, identifying this Chinese balloon 
and then the fact that coincidentally we have one after the other after the other unknown objects detected within the same week and then shot down and then that same government just yesterday or maybe the day before suddenly calling off the search for the debris of these ufos that they shot down which were not alien craft most of them if not all of them were balloons whether of a spying nature from china which we at least know the first one was and was confirmed to be that but the government has no idea what the other three objects that were shot down over america were which includes the octagonal shaped object that was knocked out above michigan and you know a lot of people have been talking about this this octagonal object that had strings hanging from them and and no propulsion and, and no equipment yeah guys it, it's called a, a bunch of balloons <laughs> and balloons have strings especially when you have a bunch of them like at a birthday party and they're all tied together they'll typically have multiple strings hanging from them or something else that was completely natural and I've read all of the transcripts from the fighter jets that shot some of these things down, including the one over Michigan. And all that he said, and this is specifically regarding the object over Michigan, because that's the one that a lot of people are talking about. You're seeing footage here of that object falling from the sky after it was hit by the jet. No doubt you guys, most of you have probably seen all of this, and I'll play other footage of the other unidentified object that was taken out. But as it pertains to the octagonal object above Michigan, the fighter pilot who was in the jet that took it out, and this is from his observations from about a thousand feet away. All right, so he already does not have a very good clear line of sight at all. So you're a thousand feet away and you're flying at no less than, you know, three or four hundred miles an hour tracking this object visually uh, with the screen inside of the actual cockpit. But that pilot even stated that he, quote, couldn't tell whether the object was metallic or not. He described lines or strings hanging down below it and also described a, quote, blackish container the size of like a four-wheeler or something even the government has come out and not only laughed at all of us laughed at anyone who would think that these things were alien in nature but has plain said straight from the white house straight from biden himself and you can find this on many different news reports even the ones coming out today after they called off the search for debris on the three ufos that they shot down besides the Chinese balloon, the White House has now said and has been saying that the leading explanation for the three downed UFOs, not counting the Chinese spy balloon, is that they were all commercial or benign. So they were not alien in nature and likely not spy balloons either. Now, some may say, well, of course the government is going to say they're not alien. That's what they would want you to think. And I would be the first to tell you guys, yeah, you know, if I thought something was off and I really thought thought that any of these objects that were shot down in rapid succession were alien in nature, I would be the first to be screaming it from the top of a mountain here on the channel. But I don't believe it. And now the government and the military have completely called off the search. Does anybody see something strange with this? I thought that this whole story, this whole sudden appearance of these objects and the, the military going completely trigger happy, taking them down, and then now to suddenly end the search for any debris of the remaining three shot down objects, it's like, does anybody here not realize something is just totally off about this whole thing? I don't doubt for a second this is a smokescreen. And you know, we also have to consider there's a lot of things happening in the world right now, all right? We are in a war with Ukraine, or rather a proxy war, but things are heating up between the US and Russia. Then we have China looking at Taiwan and taking them out. We have Japan looking back at China and China looking at Japan. Everyone is nervous. And so I'm sure the shooting down of the Chinese balloon and these other uh, three objects, which I'm sure the US military knew damn well, had nothing to do with aliens and likely had nothing to do with spy satellites. 
just did it as a show of force so that the world, including China and Russia, could see, you know, the military might of America. So that's point one why I believe this was likely a, a staged situation. You know, at least with the other three objects, you know, we may very well have discovered this Chinese balloon and, and shot it down. And, you know, good for us here in the USA, I guess, you know, although it's pretty funny since our, our phones and TVs spy on us 24-7, yet we get so crazy and lose our minds over a balloon floating overhead. But I digress. Another theory, and a thing that has really weighed heavily on me because I live in the state where it has occurred, and one of the larger theories as to the reason for this sudden UFO appearance slash shoot down, you know, total mainstream media smokescreen uh, was due to the recent train derailment right here in Ohio, which is where I live, born and bred, and I am no more than an hour and a half to two hours away from the train wreck here in Palestine, Ohio. And from what I'm seeing, and I'm not saying that this is why all of this BS regarding the UFOs and the shootdowns, but it was very strange to me. The media almost unanimously did not report and seemed to have cared less or was almost not reporting it on purpose when this train filled with dangerous chemicals crashed here in Ohio, which, by the way, occurred on February 3rd. So on February 3rd, the chemical spill here in Palestine, Ohio, occurred. Then, the very next day on February 4th, Biden orders the military to shoot down the Chinese spy balloon, which then led immediately to a non-stop 24-7 media news coverage blackout, wherein which the only news anybody was hearing about was about these balloons and these UFOs and China and us shooting them down. Hell, even I didn't even realize that a train had derailed an hour and a half from me for, you know, two or three days after the fact because I was so glued to this UFO thing and the fact that no one was reporting on it. Now, I know there will be people out there saying, Tyler, uh, there were people reporting on it, you know, Google it right now. Oh, yeah, of course, everyone's reporting on it right now. After fellow Ohioans screamed at the top of their lungs for days on end for the media and the government to do something about it and to notice what has occurred. Oh, yeah, of course, they are reporting on it now, after the fact, almost two weeks later. But make no mistake, on February 3rd, when this occurred, no one, and especially not the mainstream media was reporting on this in any sort of fashion to the point where you would actually know about it or hear about it on your phone if you're a casual news watcher. It was all UFOs and spy balloons. And the scary thing is, is that Ohio right now, I think we're in big trouble. And you know, I don't know if this whole UFOs being shot down was a smokescreen in order for us to take out a train here in Ohio. And while the media and the EPA and the CDC may say that the air and the drinking water is breathable, that is total BS because I have spoken to people and family members right here in Ohio that have seen these scary looking acidic dark chemical clouds over their homes or the dead fish in the water or the acidic smell coming from the faucet. And I have a few videos here posted to Twitter showing just what this train derailment did. And then another one happened just a couple of days after that in Michigan. You know, guys, I just want to say I understand the frustration because from the news I've read about this and everything that's occurred around this train derailment, it just reeks of not only a cover up, but just again, a government and, you know, higher ups and senators and people that are supposed to represent you. They do not care. They do not care. It took Ohio senators 10 days to post a statement about what has occurred here in Ohio, right on the border with Pennsylvania, who's right there with us. We also have an image of the CEO of Norfolk Southern, the company that runs these trains that are derailing here in Ohio and Michigan, smiling in front of reporters after this occurred. I recently also read that FEMA has denied help and aid to Ohio, and their rationale for doing so was that something along the lines of, quote, we deal with tornadoes and hurricanes, and what's happened in Ohio is something different. And uh, I don't even know where to start with that. I'm disgusted. 
What's also really, I mean, super eerie about what has occurred here in Ohio is that, would you believe it if I were to tell you that before this occurred here in Palestine, Ohio, a film called White Noise was released and came out last year and took place in this same town, same area. It was filmed all over Northeast Ohio in 2021 and where they did a lot of the shooting, the majority from what I'm reading, in the town of Palestine, Ohio. And guess what happened? in the film that took place in this very area of Ohio. You guessed it, a train crash. And so this is literally life imitating art. Train derailment in Ohio is in the same town where the film White Noise Train Crash was filmed in 2021. And so this was a Netflix film where in it a train carrying toxic chemicals gets into an accident and is derailed, unleashing fumes that create a quote airborne toxic event. This chemical spill requires everyone nearby to evacuate the area and seek shelter far from the crash. And then, here in Ohio, in real life, a train carrying harmful chemicals derailed in the very same town used as the filming location for white noise. So, um, how's that for scary? I mean, this is a real Netflix film starring Adam Driver, and uh, I know who Adam Driver, I mean, this is just creepy. This, this, with the, the UFOs being shot down, the, the fact that it looks like a cover-up, no one wants to talk about it. Even Ohio's own senators are, you know, staying completely quiet, taking them 10 days to even, you know, publish a statement. Biden decides to make a surprise trip to the Ukraine instead of coming and making a surprise trip here in Ohio for his own people and giving us the aid that we need. Uh, apparently Ukraine is now a US state, I guess. I, I, did it become a US state? I don't know. And this isn't to bash Ukraine, it's just like, you know, and Biden is downplaying the whole thing. It just, it makes me sick. But what do you guys think about this film coming out the year before in the same town and with a chemical train spill? And it's not only here in Ohio, strange things are happening. There are other train derailments as well, videos being posted to TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Here is a really creepy clip that was posted out of California, where apparently hundreds and hundreds of train cars carrying chemicals of an unknown kind are being wheeled in and parked, at least temporarily or I don't know what, in the deep areas of uh, farmland and, and out in the California country and nobody knows what they are, why they're there and I, apparently from what I've seen they shouldn't be there. It's not normal. Hey everybody, this is Dahl Arnson with the Alaska Patriot Network. I am visiting California and I am here with one of the local ranchers and I was brought out to this field in Stanislaw County California and this is the center of like the heartland of the the nut industry the almond industry the pecan or not pecans I'm sorry almond walnut uh, cattle uh, there's not a lot out here folks and yesterday we were at a gathering and we were alerted by another rancher that the railroad company some company they, that nobody knows which company this is has brought in hundreds of these railroad cars and you can just see the line of them here let me see it make sure i'm getting it in the shot sorry getting this in the shot now it, on the on the cars they say liquid odorless liquid petroleum gas now they are loaded the, the they're riding low on their axles they're double and triple deep on the switchback and, and this is important because these ranchers, this is unprecedented in this area. No, none of them, they're like, what the hell is this? Why are they bringing this into the, you know, heart of nowhere? I mean, unless you own land here or you're in the know-how, you don't know that this is, this is here right now. And like I said, this is just the end of this line. I'll make sure I'm getting these cars in here. And it goes on for miles. There's hundreds of these cars filled with an unknown liquid in the middle. Now, what's significant about this is just over, you know, a few miles over is the main water pipeline that goes into San Francisco. This also abuts two important industri uh, in agricultural 
uh, rivers that feed this agricultural valley. So we don't quite know what's going on here. And it was the talk of the valley yesterday. I'm, I'm just visiting from Alaska. So I did ask one of the ranchers. So I'm not exactly sure what's occurring here. The effects of this chemical spill are not only going to affect Ohio. They are not only going to affect Pennsylvania. The proximity that this chemical spill had and the fact that they set it on fire and the proximity of that to the Ohio River, which serves millions and millions of people with their everyday drinking water, shower water needs. But we have this thing called the wind and it is pushing this plume, which there indeed was one and continues to be as you're seeing in these images, this chemical spill or rather the byproduct of what has now been created from the powers that be deciding to light it on fire is going to affect, from what I've seen, potentially the entire east coast of the United States. So before we go any further, and this is really, really sad, it's sickening to me, but here are some of the videos from not only Palestine, Ohio, but from Pennsylvania and areas all over of what it's done to the animal life, to the weather, to the clouds, the atmosphere. This is scary stuff. Look at him. I swear, I swear these birds are upside down dead. We in New Carlisle, Indiana right now. Can we? Oh, God, open. They need to check it. They need to check it. They need to check it. I'm going to show you. They didn't already hit the ground. What's going on, world? What is going Oh, yeah, I just cycled my wipers. And this is just rain, mind you. Like, my windshield was perfectly clean before it started raining. It's kind of hard to see. I know you caught it a little bit. That isn't a reflection. That's actually, like... Yeah, see it right there? Look how dirty my fucking windshield is from this rain. Like, it's like if it's salt. All right, guys, so um, the thing with the birds really, really um, just puts a feeling in the pit of my stomach. And I feel for everyone, especially if you're in Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, anyone that's on the East Coast, I can only say drink bottled water, take care of your pets, keep an eye on them, keep an eye on yourselves and your family. And, you know, this is now mandated. We have officials now telling Ohioans to drink bottled water. That is, of course, until they, quote, confirm whether the local water supply is safe to drink. Uh, and I, I think that 
after seeing what we've seen and the uh, CDC coming out days ago claiming that the air in Ohio was clean and yet we have birds dropping from the sky, other people getting sick, then we have reporters getting arrested for simply attempting to do a news story on the derailment. I mean, this reeks of cover-up and, and of course they are downplaying it and it, it feels like they used this whole UFO shootdown thing to cover for what had occurred in Ohio and Michigan and other places. There seems to be a lot of chemical spills happening lately when you start to look into it. Even Edward Snowden, the guy who would know more than any of us, to be frank, especially about devious government cover-ups and games, he tweeted the following on his official account saying uh, regarding these UFOs recently shot down, quote, it's not aliens. I wish it were aliens, but it's not aliens. It's just the old engineered panic, an attractive nuisance ensuring NATSEC reporters get assigned to investigate balloon BS rather than budgets or bombings. But that's what I have been telling you guys for 10 years now on this channel. That is why ever since five years ago when people like Elizondo, all of these guys coming out and also disappeared, most of them in the past five years, preaching this non-stop believe in your government regarding UFOs nonsense, this UAP nonsense, and the praise that the government and, and the uh, Pentagon has been given for looking into UFOs. The government isn't looking into UFOs. The government knows damn well that UFOs and beings and civilizations from off planet have been visiting us. They've known about this for hundreds of years. I, I'm so tired of saying this to people. It is always going to be the little guys like us here at Secure Team and others that have gotten the real footage out there, not this nonsense that the government is handing to certain people and putting out there trying to make you believe they care. Meanwhile, something else happens behind you, same as with this newest UFO shootdown fiasco. In my mind, and to finish out this video, this was a cover-up. This was a smoke screen for something. And whether Ohio had something to do with it or not, my heart goes out to everyone here in the Buckeye State and Pennsylvania and the surrounding states. So I hope you guys stay safe. We'll get back to UFO footage and uh, any updates I have. But all I can say is stay tuned for more right here at Secure Team, the biggest UFO channel on YouTube, and stop believing that the government is going to give you any truth regarding UFOs, aliens, the military, or anything else for that matter. You guys really sincerely stay safe out there, and I'll see you back with a new video in just a bit.